The camshaft is the heart of an engine, and we test a lot of them on Engine Masters, focusing on each individual component of the grind to try and find out how it affects performance. And this time, we're gonna ask the question, can you have too much exhaust duration? Specifically, we're talking about split pattern cams where the intake duration is less than the exhaust duration. Now, we did this once a long time ago, and we tested single pattern cams versus split pattern cams, meaning, Single pattern, same duration on the intake and exhaust. Split pattern, more duration on the exhaust than on the intake. And in that test, we sort of concluded, man, you really want to go with a split pattern for a typical street and strip engine under, say, 6,500 RPM. Not a very specialized engine. But then I asked myself, what happens if you go really extreme with bigger and bigger and bigger splits? More and more and more exhaust duration? So that's what we're gonna do here. Now, to understand this, let me explain the basics to you just a little bit. What is camshaft duration? It is how long the camshaft opens the valve as expressed in degrees of crankshaft rotation. So as you're barring the engine over, it's actually how far do you turn that crankshaft while the valve is still open. So if we say 268 degrees of intake duration, well then the crankshaft rotates 268 degrees while the valve is open. So it's how long the valve is open. I've often used the analogy of opening a door to let people in. Duration is how long that door is open except for the door is in the engine, and what it's letting in is the air and fuel mixture, not just people. So short duration is open and close. Long duration is open and close. It's just a longer time that that window is open to allow air and fuel into the engine. So the camshafts that we're gonna test here have what's called a split pattern. Once again, the intake is smaller than the exhaust on duration. So we've got a 268 degree lobe on the intake on all three of these custom camshafts from Comp Cams who made these custom grinds just to help us do this test. So 268 is the same lobe on all of them. Now the exhaust duration is gonna change. We have a four degree split by having a 272 duration exhaust lobe on the very first cam. The next one's a 10 degree split, 268 on the intake, 278 on the exhaust. And the last one's a 16 degree split, 268 on the intake and 284 on the exhaust. And we're gonna find out what that does to performance. But one of the things you have to know is that the lobe separation angle is the same on all of these camshafts. So as the exhaust duration gets longer, you necessarily end up changing the exhaust opening point, which is earlier, and the exhaust valve closing point, which is later. And when you do that, you also affect the overlap. So the way the cam is ground, it's impossible for us to narrow this down to just one variable. You're gonna have to deal with more overlap, but maybe more more importantly, a change in that exhaust valve opening and closing point. And that might end up having more effect on the overall performance than we know. We'll talk about that as we go. First, we're gonna test the smallest cam, then we're gonna to progress to the bigger and bigger exhaust duration. Here's the engine that we're doing it with. It's a little bit unusual because it is a small cubic inch big block Chevy. Typically, we like to go to the moon, but this one's only 478 cubic inches, a 4.5 inch bore, a 3.7, six inch stroke. It's a 12 and a half to one compression engine, and the cylinder heads are a really good Dart Pro One CNC. They're 365 cc's on the inlet track. I should pause there for a moment to tell you that many engine designers will base their camshaft split duration on the flow ratio of the intake port to the exhaust port on the cylinder head. And this is gonna have a really good flow ratio. But I'll tell you from our experience that regardless of the cylinder head design, the camshaft grind tends to make performance changes that are directionally the same. If you have a different you know, flow ratio, you might end up seeing a different you know, percentage of shift, but we're still gonna be able to learn something here, even with that good cylinder head. Now we've topped it off with an Edelbrock Super Victor, and of course we have a Holley Dominator up top, and the killer Moroso oiling in this thing. The engine should make about 750 horsepower. So here we go, we're gonna sit down with the Steves, see what they think of this program, and then we're gonna start making noise with our little 478 big block Chevy. All right, guys, I think I sorted this out so it's ridiculous excess. I wanted to test <laughs> things to extremes to see what happened. The cams that we're gonna run uh, intake and exhaust ration 268, 272, 268, 278, and 268, 284.
Wow. Well, that's you a know, big split. That's what yeah. you want. You, you know? think so? Oh, yeah. You really want to be able to see the difference. So oh, the, yeah. what the trend is, you want to take big bites. Now, I, this is bigger than anything I've seen. Have you ever seen 268, 284? Not 268, 284, but I've certainly seen 282, 284, 300, 302 yeah. on, on the bigger inch motors where there's mm -hmm. certainly that spread um, typically in nitrous applications. You know, I, th I think the interesting thing here is not applying it to an application like nitrous, but just seeing what trend it has to the engine. I mean, does it increase engine speed? Does it help carry further? Does it lose something somewhere? I mean, this is exciting. And on top of that, I have never seen this engine with our baseline 268, 272 cam or with this particular version of this intake manifold. So I'm curious what power it makes with this new and smaller camshaft. Less than it made with the bigger and taller camshaft. No way! Because <laughs> <laughs> if that's one thing we've learned on Engine Masters, it's that big cams make power. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> wow. Duh. So we did make it a little bit smaller, but it's still going to show us the trend of what we're trying to yeah. see with exhaust split. I'm ready for the baseline. Me too. Me yep. too. numbers with that smallest exhaust duration camshaft. It made 758.7 horsepower at a screaming 7,000 RPM. And the torque peak was 605.6 at 6,200, which isn't too surprising that it's that high in the RPM range. It's only 800 RPM difference between peak torque and peak horsepower, which is not as broad as we would like stuff. But small engine, big cylinder head, big camshaft, it's little peaky. Well, and part of it too is, is I think that the intake manifold limits it some when it gets to really higher engine speeds. So it carries it well up to peak torque, but then it doesn't have enough airflow or intake manifold to carry it up higher up here. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe the camshaft shaft will change that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, I guess, what we're here to but see. But then can we still attribute it to the intake manifold if the camshaft? It's, it's a combination of both. Yeah. Of course. Always is. Yeah. It's never one, one yeah. thing. The other thing I would note is that with a 268 duration intake lobe making peak power at 7,000 RPM, that's pretty high for a small lobe. One of the things I think we're kind of passing on some too is this thing's 477 cubic inches. It's really hard to get great torque and, and raise these numbers up some with no compression. Yeah. And these things are hard to get compression in. I mean, if you can make 12 and a half, you've done your homework and like a 565, you can get up there at 14 and a half, 14, seven without any issues at all. Right. Uh, this is 12 and a quarter to one. Yeah. Let's talk about it longer before we go change the cam because I don't feel like changing a cam right now. So <laughs> let's have a longer discussion. Okay, well, let's get to the philosophical points here, uh, right? I think Let's you're go right. change the cam. That Bottom change line it. is you won't have to change the cam. You'll just have to change the rocker arms on one side. Oh, great. That's true. All right, let's All go right. do that. All right, next cam coming in. We just tested our 268-278 cam, 10 degrees of split between intake and exhaust. And when we were watching the numbers stream by as Brule was doing the test, Dulcich and I were busting up going, this didn't make a bit of difference, but it seems to have made maybe a tiny, tiny bit of difference. Here are the peak numbers. 761.5 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 603.9 pound-feet of torque at 6,200. But as always, the story is not in the peaks, it's in the shape of the curves as we overlay them. Black lines are the test with the greater split in exhaust duration. Red lines are with the 268, 272 camshaft. Oh yeah, your range torque was better before. And yep. low end and torque. Horsepower. It 
it tilted the curve, but it tilted it way up here. At peak torque. Right, so that the, the one with the less of a duration split made a little bit more torque down here. Yeah. And the one with more split, as we've seen before, carried more RPM and created the uh, tiny, tiny bit more horsepower, which actually gains well after the peak. Yeah, it hangs on longer. Yeah. And, and you know, having never done this test, it's what I've been told 100 times is what would happen. And, and it's subtle. I mean, it's six yep. degrees only in one lobe, mm -hmm. everything else being exactly the same. So I, I think the trend is there. Um, See, it's subtle. I thought because the overlap increased when we increased the duration of the exhaust lobe that we might see the mid-range come up. I think it's when the exhaust valve opens. Right, which is opening sooner. Sooner, I think, is where the torque goes. Yeah. That goes out the window because of that. So it's it's that trade-off thing. There's no one thing. You would like to say that more overlap makes more mid-range torque, but you're also opening the exhaust valve yeah, it's earlier. Valve timing. Yeah. You know, the perfect engine doesn't use any fuel, doesn't take any timing, and makes unlimited horsepower. Uh huh. But in the real world, everything is a trade-off. When you gain right. one thing, you lose another. You gain top end, you lose bottom end. You 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 make more power at high speed, you might lose some torque. It's just nothing's free. The thing about opening the exhaust earlier, which is what happens when you make a higher duration lobe on the exhaust side, is if you leave the lobe separation angle the same, you are necessarily opening the exhaust valve earlier and closing it later. But opening it earlier means that when you're in the power stroke, you open the valve and you're releasing cylinder pressure sooner. The blowdown would be harder, so it right. might tend to evacuate better. It depends on the header, and there's a right. lot of variables involved in how it's gonna react, I think. but. Uh... But at that point in the in the power stroke, is there really that much pressure to even make a difference? Not there? only the pressure, but all the pressure is decaying all the way as the piston's going down. Of course, this is more the volume's increasing the whole way. But the other part of it is uh, the crank angle's not as advantageous right. either. So at that point, the leverage on the crankshaft is going down quite a bit too. So maybe it's not the early exhaust valve opening that creates this problem. What else would it be? And the question now is when we add. 16 more degrees of exhaust duration, does this tendency continue to work in that same tilt, or do we go completely off the plot and mess something up so the engine runs really horribly? I know how we find out. We go change the cam. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs>